Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is me, it's Bark, and I am back with another obscure mic for you. And this is the mystery microphone. It's mystery microphone number one. And you can't even tell what it is yet. That's the greatest part about doing these mystery mics. And to have this Inno Gear universal shock mount, you have no idea what this is yet. And I think that's just wonderful because what this is, is the a AK-60 yet again, except this time it's not an end address dynamic microphone. It is now an end address condenser microphone. So this is mystery mic one. I felt like it had been a long time since I gave you guys one of the uh, fun mic build videos. And I've really been inspired lately to, to get back into that. I actually have modified and made like five different microphones in the past couple days just because I want to do some work with my hands. That's what she said. You knew what was coming. You knew what was coming. So let's go ahead and talk about how I built this microphone and then we'll run it through the plethora of all three or four tests. So I started with a pile PD mic 70. Now the pile PD mic 70 is basically the same basically as the flyby bm 1000 that i did a video on a while back ago i mean it's been quite a while ago but basically we're talking a what should be a 15 dollars mic because the flyby bm 1000 was a 15 dollars mic this one run me 27 dollars so for 27 dollars got the microphone i got a, a uh tripod stand and a cord that will never be used but i took the pile pd mic 70 took it apart uh which you could very easily do the grills that you see here that go on the back and front side of the capsule they're just glued into place so a screwdriver a flathead peel that off i'm sorry i didn't take video of me doing this i figured pictures would just have to do but you can pop off both sides of the grill on this microphone a few screws will take the top off where the condenser capsule sets. And the next thing you know, as you can see here, we've got the PCB board with a couple wires connected to it. And luckily that PCB board was connected to an XLR port. So I didn't have to do anything with the XLR. It was already connected to the board, but I tested this microphone out and I thought, well, it's not perfect. This microphone sounds pretty cool. I would like to put it in an Aokio AK-60 because I've never done an end address condenser. And granted, I didn't switch or, you know, mess with any other parts, but it was still fun. And the great thing about the Aokio AK-60 was the circuit board from the PileMic PD-70 connected to that XLR connection slid right down in the Aokio AK-60 uh, bottom end, as you can see here fit perfectly not not even hardly a millimeter of space left on each side it literally went in perfectly so you see the pcb board attached to the bottom of the aokio ak60 here and from there basically all i had to do was put the mic back together run the wires up through the aokio top half after you know assembling the bottom to the top again I did have to replace the foam. The great thing about the Pile PD Mic 70, as you can see the grill here, I was able to take the foam out of both sides of the grill and shape into the Aokio AK-60. So I ran the wires up. I connected those wires back to the condenser capsule, and I was able to just wedge the existing piece. I mean, I literally didn't have to do a whole lot here. It was basically taking the internals out of one mic, putting in a hollow shell, soldering everything back together, screwing everything back together. And as you can see here, the capsule is just resting wedged from end to end of that circular opening of the Aokio AK-60. And I took a little bit of glue and just kind of adhesed, adhesed, adhered, connected with glue, the bottom of the mount for the capsule against the side there so just a little bit of glue it was actually wedged in there it wouldn't really slide down any further i got really lucky on the capsule here it literally fit in the opening 
perfectly. So then I just had to glue that in, add a little foam back into the top head basket, press that back in, and there you go. I mean, it, it really was that easy. And here we are. I've got an Aokio AK-60, now an end address condenser with the internals from Pile PD mic, PD-70, whatever the hell it was called. But I, I actually think this is a usable microphone. Now, granted, I already know that plosives are an issue with it, definitely an issue with it. So you're going to have to use that mic technique off to the side to get it sounding correct and, and decent and you, you don't want to talk into the front of it because i'll go ahead and do the plosive test now peter piper picked a patch of pickled pineapple pizza peter piper picked a patch of pickled pineapple pizza honestly it's not any worse than most microphones it sounds about the same as far as plosive rejection goes i mean it's bad there's, don't get me wrong there's nothing good about it but again as long as you keep it off to the side of your mouth 90 degrees three four inches away you're going to be just fine using this. And as Bandrew pointed out from a sound sample, it's not even very sibilant. So you don't have a lot of sibilance with this mic. Again, the plosives are not the greatest, but you can get by with that. You can use a pop filter. You can stick a foam uh, windscreen on it, and you're going to be just fine. When you get right on top of the uh, Aokio AK-60 build, now an end address condenser, this is what it sounds like when you're right on top of it. And I, and I think that sounds fine too. I actually... Again, this is not the most perfect sounding mic in the world, but it sounds pretty good. I mean, it is a tiny bit shrill up top, but I mean, it's it's negligible. It is tiny. I can deal with this. It's fine. Again, I'm not saying I made a world-class world beater here. In fact, I made nothing because the internals are the exact same as what was in the other shell. I just wanted a different form factor, literally for fun. So... Let's go ahead and do some off-axis noise rejection with this microphone. So I'm talking into the front of the end address Aokio AK-60 PD Pile PD Mic 70 blah, blah, blah. Talking into that. Now I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. You can see what the off-axis rejection is on this wonderful microphone. 180 degrees. And, I, well, I'll wait till I get back around to, to talk about why I really did this. 90 degrees again and I'm going to slowly spin it back around to the front of the microphone so you may ask why did you take the exact same internals from the Pile PD Mic 70 and just shove them into an end address Aokio AK-60 well the reason being off axis noise rejection I thought if I put enough foam there's a plosive if I put enough foam around here and I put a little piece of foam all the way at the bottom here. So the voice wasn't rejecting off of the metal plate in the middle of the microphone. I actually put a couple layers of foam down in there. So besides the end of this, and actually completely, this capsule is surrounded in foam. Completely surrounded in foam. Maybe not the thickest amount of foam in the world, but it is completely surrounded in foam. So I feel like nothing is really getting into this microphone and into the capsule, except at the end address position. I don't think a lot's getting in at the side, and I know a lot's not getting in at the back because I've kind of got it reinforced to not let that sound in. Now I'm going to grab the Pile PD Mic 70 and just show you what it looked like and explain that a little further, even though you probably already know what I'm talking about. One second. Okay, so here's our uh, here's our old shell. Here's our pile PD mic 70 right here. So basically grilled all the way around. And I just thought this could potentially make a better sounding microphone out of the capsule and internals than this body could. Not only because I felt like I could make this a lot more quiet in the back end and the sides, but I just thought overall... I could make a tunnel of sound as opposed to this sponge of sound. So I probably should have taken this microphone and gave you a sound test beforehand, but my dumbass didn't think of that. What I did think of, however, was using, <sighs> this is going to be a spiral of a video. Okay. So what I did do was I took the capsule out of the flyby BM 1000 I put back in the Pile PD Mic 70 and I took the old PCB board out of the 
Aokio AK60, and I put that in here, and I and I went ahead and saved the shell of this microphone, and made yet another condenser microphone. Not far off from what it was, but the board is much smaller, and luckily was attached to the XLR, so that's in here. And I, I didn't want to waste the capsule because this capsule sounds halfway decent. So there you go. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in real quick. You might hear some background noise because my heater kicked back on. But we'll go ahead and plug this microphone in as well. So this is uh, kind of similar to this one, but we'll see how it sounds because this is also a swippy swap creation of mine as well. Let's go ahead and switch over. Okay, so here is the... Uh, the other creation, so to speak. So I feel like this has a little bit more of a hollow sound and I kind of attribute that to the body, but this is the capsule from the Flyby BM1000 with the circuit board, the original circuit board from the Aokio AK60, really thin, really small, smaller than the one that I put back in there. And this is what this sounds like. So I feel like I'm mixing, matching, creating, but yet I still have usable microphones. Now, granted, maybe it'll come through different on the video. I don't think this sounds as good as that did. And I, and I, I don't mean tonally. I just mean, I feel like this is a little more loose and there's a little more ambience and room noise coming in, which some people may like, but I like that voice only style that I made there. Again, my treated room may make all this irrelevant. I don't know. But yeah, so here's the other microphone I made, but make no mistake about it. This is microphone number one that I did the video on more of a sound video. The video before this is that. So let me show you what I did with the Flyby BM1000. Okay, so now I have the old Flyby BM1000. So what I did with this microphone was not a lot. I left the original circuit board. Remember, I took the capsule out of this and I put in the pile PD mic 70 with the circuit board from the old Aokio AK60. But what I did different here, I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a green LED light in there, but if you notice the capsule that's now in here is much larger. Got a little noisy there. But so I took a Superlux HM8A Superlux microphone. I took the capsule out of that and basically just swapped into the Flyby BM1000 because I thought this thing sounds pretty decent as is already. What if I take a nice RK47 style condenser capsule, mount inside of this, and there you go. I do, I do feel like that is noisy though. Yeah, maybe I can do something like that. Anyways... Nah, it's still, it's still kind of noisy. The self noise on this thing is not great, but I wanted to experiment. So you got a, a large capsule in this. It's definitely taken more power to run it. That's probably due to the fact that I've got a small circuit board trying to power a uh, nicer, big one inch diaphragm capsule. I don't know. But anyways, if it wasn't for the self noise of this thing, I think it would sound pretty good. Oh, well. We'll see. I think it sounded better on the Zoom PodTrack P4. I didn't hear as much self-noise. But let's switch back to the original reason for this video real quick. I'm rambling. So now we're back on the Aokio AK60 with the Pio PD mic internals. And yeah, there you go. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this. I, I came up with, like I said, I think five microphones from parts and pieces that I played around with. And uh Honestly, I think this is my favorite. Like I said, it does get a little tiny bit shrill up top, but I feel like the clarity's good. I don't feel like the self noise is bad at all. I'll be quiet for a second. It's there, but I don't think it's bad. But I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, if if in a pinch I need to throw a guest on a podcast or just want to take this and make a podcast with it, I, I think it does sound passable. And again, all this was, was a pile PD mic 70, $27 bought it used actually from Amazon. It was like 45 brand new, which I, I think is just kind of too much, but I might pay 45 for this in this form factor. I think it sounds pretty decent. Actually, I think this had potential with the big, large super Lux capsule in it, but that self noise, I may have to find a different, uh, board to wire that specific capsule up to 
anyways, uh, anyone that guessed anything close to this, congratulations, but I don't think anyone did. Granted, I wasn't trying to get the exact microphone, but I wanted to know if you thought it was a dynamic, a condenser. Just wanted to hear some thoughts. So another Aokio AK-60 build. I'm telling you, if you want to mess around and build a microphone, as long as you're not using a large circuit board, if you want to mess around with dynamics, if you want to mess around with parts from cheap condensers and just see what you can come up with, the Aokio AK-60 is just the easiest and most fun and the form factor that I love, you can get that nice end address feel. And it looks good. I mean, it's a good looking mic. Fits in the NO gear really well. I had a lot of fun with this one. I hope you had fun watching it. Barks out with yet a, another oddball creation. It's what I have fun doing. We'll see you guys next time on Obscure. Mike's peace out.